Morning, everyone. Early start today. I'm uh, enjoying lovely coffee that Nick made me. And Nick is just raising anchor at the moment. We are going to sail down the coast of Malaysia today and we are getting ourselves into position so that tomorrow we can cross the Singapore Strait. So we need to get ourselves right there so we can do it all in daylight hours. So we've got about a 60 mile passage today. We are in um, an island called Cebu and we are heading down to an anchorage just before Singapore. I'll put it on the map. Beautiful calm night, a little bit of wake coming through the anchorage at the moment because there's a lot of boats going out and oh, the anchors just come up. I can hear that. So yeah, we wanted to get an early start so that we can just get in nice and early and anchor up and uh, yeah, not have to do anything in the dock. We were ready. How did that sound? Putting the Gloria props into overdrive, but it's always really hard to tell if they're actually in overdrive or not. I have to rely on listening to it. So step one is to get the boat going backwards. I had to get at least, they say at least a knot, a knot in reverse. And then you push the throttles forward straight away. That's meant to put them into overdrive. I'm Teresa, this is Nick, and this is Ruby Rose 2, our floating home. Join us as we settle into life on board our brand new catamaran, documenting our adventures and never shying away from the reality of boat life. Subscribe to our channel and leave a comment because we love to hear from you and a big thanks to our community of patrons. Ready Nick? All right. Very light wind day. Chef, engineer, bottle washer. So it's bacon sandwich time. Saturday morning bacon bun. Then yeah. simple but effective. Like meat. Is it good? Oh. No. Oh, wow. Cooking the bacon in the sandwich press is like a genius move. It's it makes it all crispy. Mm -hmm. But also only takes a couple of minutes. It's time. Time for the asymmetric. That's the sail clock. That's the sail clock. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Having a nice big trampoline makes it easier life. Very. Tack. Tack. Yep. Yeah. Now close the clutch. Take that line, you run it outboard, okay. completely outboard, outside of the shrouds. I think it's outside of the shrouds. Yeah, it is. Is it? Yeah. Yep. And then put that black turning block. Up. Yep, yep. To pull the tack through. That's it. That's all we need to do. All right. So basically, we need to attach the head to the sail. Yes. And start pulling it up. Okay. Hi. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Keep going. Yep. Yeah, yeah, we're good. I think. We're back to the cockpit. All right, can we unfold this? Okay. Now this is the thing. Yes, tell me. This thing, when you pull the sheet in, yeah, yeah. you've got to be fast. And I mean by hand, but fast. Okay. I so don't mean doing this, I mean like you hauling it, right? Okay. Go. So I need to keep the sheet quite taut. Yes, yes. Okay. I'm ready when you are. Yep. Oh, geez, I can't believe we just did that first time. I hope you could see it because this camera was like tucked into my neckline and uh, probably this was in front of the lens. I apologize. 
Oh, wow. <laughs> that looks amazing. Oh man, <laughs> I do not mind saying I was feeling nervous about that. The last time we flew the spinnaker, we got it up and then the wind dropped off and we had to take it down within like five seconds. And we got it wrapped around the um, jib, the forestay, or the, the jib really. And we got it untangled in the end, but there was definitely a few nervous moments where I was like, I have literally no idea what I'm supposed to be doing right now which kind of freaked me out. And so I was a bit nervous about putting the spinner crop today, but you know what they say about getting back on the horse. You kind of, if you make a mistake with something, you have to do it again at the next opportunity. Otherwise you just um, lose confidence. So the fact that we got her up and flying on our first attempt, no less, is uh, very, a very, very big relief. And she looks amazing. Maybe not right now, hang on. Nick. makes me so nervous when it does that. I hate it. We might just be losing the wind a little bit. It's a wind ship. Okay. Right? Yeah, you okay? Yeah. How's Six. We still only have like six knots of apparent wind. Yeah. So we're just, we're in very, very low wind. Yeah. So we're making six knots in six knots. With an engine running. With an engine running, yeah. Uh, we've had a, well, it's, Bit of funny old morning stroke afternoon. The wind has almost died on us. We have not a lot left in wind. We have about between four and six knots. We've tried the code zero. We've tried the asymmetric. It is, there's just no wind. So we are motoring just under mainsail. We are about, I would say 25 miles from our anchorage for the evening. And that takes us all the way around. We are heading probably at a course at the moment of about 180. And then it will slowly increase as we go around the very kind of like tip of the peninsula towards Singapore. And then that will be our anchorage for tonight. We need to anchor in a river. And the reason we are kind of still motoring is because it is an unfamiliar river and we want to get in during daylight. So we're doing between five and a half and six knots. It's frustratingly slow, but there you go. We can't always just have 10 knot passages. The AIS on Singapore Strait is looking as intense as I would expect it to be. I'm looking forward to that. So that's going to be tomorrow's fun and games. But tonight we have, as I said, 20 to 30 miles to go. And um, yes, crew morale is good. We're spending a lot of time eating, cooking, bacon sandwiches, toasted cheese sandwiches, three sweater cheese salad, yada, yada, yada. And yeah, we'll hopefully tie up tonight, have a cold beer, get our heads down, get up tomorrow and start again. Okay, so after a day of uh, punching tide and dealing with very, very light winds, we have decided, and making very, very slow progress, we have decided to just uh, pop the engines into overdrive and just give it some beans. And now we are doing seven and a half knots, which is very satisfying. We're just gonna um, hug the coastline. And I've been told that that's the best way of getting around this point, because if you go a little bit too far out, you'll be dealing with fishing nets everywhere. So we're going to stay as close to the, the coast as possible, keeping an eye on depth and everything else. And as I said, we've got about 20 miles to go, which means that at, you know, seven and a half knots, we should be there within a few hours. All right, we've just got our first look at the Singapore Strait. And uh, it doesn't look too bad from this vantage point, but I know that tomorrow, we're going to be absolutely in the thick of it. I cannot wait. Just between you and me. I'm very excited for some strange reason. The other thing I'm excited about is that you, can, you won't be able to see, but I can see bloody Indonesia over there. So we've got, I can see Indonesia. We're right next door to Malaysia. Well, we're, we're in Malaysia and we're right next door to Singapore. Crazy, right? The things we do on our boat, I'll tell you what, blows my mind. We are just entering the Singapore Strait and it's a bit bloody mental. Number one, we're punching about a knot of tide. That's why you can hear both engines going. We've got both gorries in overdrive just to give us the extra drive. 
we're going through a shoal. The shoal is, in some places, really damn shallow. There is a lot of shipping. There is a dredger in front of us. And in addition to that, someone stuck a couple of oil rigs right in front of the path. Where do they come from? And we've got about three hours of daylight left. So we're trying to juggle the getting to our anchorage in daylight, avoiding the oil rigs. There's a lot of shipping out there. I will take you forward. Just get away from the back end of the noises. Oil rig, big bloody oil rig, dredger, oil rig, shoal, shoal, tanker, 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 tanker. Wow. I just saw a big fish jump out. Look at those fish jump out of the water. Look. Let's focus on what we're doing. Okay, almost end of our day. We have about oh, 500 meters to run. It's actually very, very pleasant out here. There's a naval base over there, which I'm not going to film for obvious reasons and this is our anchorage for the night shower cold beer hot pasta play the guitar for a bit start again in the morning but yeah all good yeah you okay yeah the, the, the bottom is kind of like not it's not fine sand it's kind of like shit. yeah so i don't think the holding is excellent yeah i just see an anchor alarm to go lower on yeah We are doing something very exciting today and possibly quite stressful. Singapore police, Singapore police, this is your Ruby Rose 2, over. We are going through the Singapore Strait. Just been asked by BTS to go into the middle of the shipping, the port hand side. One of the busiest shipping lanes in the world, if not the busiest shipping lane in the world. Shipping is not to be trifled with. We're both feeling like excited, but maybe a tad nervous. The weather's lovely. We're in the shipping lanes at the moment. And the sea stays calm. It's called Thames. Nick is bloody loving this. 